Hello, um, today I'm going to be working on a, um, a seascape or a harbour sea with lots of little boats dotted around. Um, I'm going to put the picture up uh, which I'm using for my reference. It was a photograph that I took down at Lyme Regis. Um, you'll notice in the photograph there are no people um, and but in my painting I'm going to put a couple of characters just to give the boats a bit of uh, size. So um, I'm using, I'll be using probably three brushes today. I've got an Escoda Ultimo. This is an Alvaro Castagnet, size 18. It's an Ultimo, so that means it's it's uh, natural hair, which is great for doing loose paintings. But this isn't going to be that loose. Uh, I'm u then I'm using an Escoda Perla Synthetico, uh, it's from Barcelona, it's made in Barcelona, and it's a size 10. So I've got those two. And also, uh, this is a Billy Shoal brush. I got that from the SAA. These two brushes I got from Jackson's. I got that from the SAA, and it's a Billy Shoal brush, and it's mainly designed for doing um, flowers and things like that, but I use it for very, very fine watercolour. It gets a lovely point when it's wet. And I may use my little fan brush. Um, this is, it was an old Terry Harrison uh, brush that I think he designed for acrylic paintings. But I use it for my watercolour. This is a bit battered now. See it's fallen to pieces, so I just keep ramming it in there and I might put a bit of tape on there later. Anyway, so that's my brushes. Uh, I'm using a 425 GSM paper, which is lovely and thick. And I think it is, um, yep, yeah, it's Bockingford. So it's Bockingford and it's rough. Now my paints, I'm using a mixture of Daniel Smith's and um, Schminky Horadam. Schminky Horadam. Schminky. Yeah. I got a little, um, I got one of those kits, you know, where it's all together, got lots of different palettes. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's what I'll be using today, and hope that helps, and we'll get on with the scene. Now, I'm not using the colours that you'll see in the painting, I'm making my own colours up artistic license and I want to create a different bit of mood. I'm going to have a, a pinky orangey sky, quite sunsetty, and let's just see how it goes from there. So firstly I'm going to wet the whole of this top part because that's where I'm going to do my sky. So I'm using my big mopping brush to do that with. Oh, I forgot to say, I also have one of these little little spray brushes, spray uh, bottles, and it's good to that keeps your picture alive. When if you think something's starting to dry and you don't want it to dry yet, so I'm only going to go down to to the tops of the boats, these boats anyway, and these sails. We don't worry about that because we can always pull those out. No, just along there. I'm not going too careful, you know. We can, and I think actually I might just take it down here just to maybe just see if we can blend a little bit of atmosphere down here. Right, so first layer. I'm going to create my mixture. I'm using um, Opera Rose. Opera Rose colour. I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow with that. There you go. Right across the top there. I'm 
Now I'm going to put a little bit more Opera Rose in there. So make that sky a little bit redder. And now a bit more yellow as I come across that side. Yeah. Uh, a bit more Opera Rose there. Now I'm just going to add some water along here. Because it's going to be lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. But I quite like that anyway. But I don't think there's enough pigment on there. I've been a little bit mean. So I'm going to add some more pigment here. A bit more up rose in there. And now a bit of the yellow mixed in. Or yellow there because you should always remember this is going to dry many shades lighter than what it actually is now and we don't want to don't want to be scared of putting color on put a bit of water on there now a bit more water there. now then Let's switch this down a little bit under here. These are my main boats. I'm going to try and leave those as if I can. You know, it's not the end of the world if you end up getting a bit of paint over here. But if you can, do. So we're getting that pinkness over here. Now with this pinkness, because this is the this is the beach part, I'm now going to add a little bit of burnt sienna here. Add a bit more burnt sienna. Add a bit more burnt sienna. There. Just underneath the boat, it needs to be quite dark, so we'll just add in some colours there. This is just a, this is going to be a backwash anyway. And you get little accidents happen, and we quite like those sometimes. You might pick up a little bit of green, or a darker bit of purple, we're we'll doing that now. And you just build it in. You just build it in. And you don't worry about it. So there's a fun bit. Let's tip this over and get some of that painting, paint, water running down there. And we can direct that by just tipping your board to the right angle. So if it's moving up to the sky, tip it down this way. I'm just running off all that water there. Let it run off. See, this is this part here is going to be wall and a darker colour. So we're not we don't want we're not bothered about that so much. This is the most important part, and as is this. So we're going to just let it drip down there. Back a little bit of that. off there. There we go. I've got my uh, board at an angle of about about 25 degrees and I find that that's just just right for me that it works. You might like it further up whatever but that suits me for the way I paint. See we've run a little bit of this paint, paint over to the top of that and that's going to be white so I've got a special brush for removing that. It's called a handkerchief. So I roll it up into a little bowl. And while it's still damp, I can just dab in. Don't rub, you just dab. If you rub, you'll make a pig's ear of it. 
So there's a bit on the top there that I want to lift out. Um, is there anywhere else? No. I'm not bothered about that because that's going to be dark. Just that top part there. Now this is starting to gather here. Now if I don't take care of that now, <coughs> excuse me, you will end up with uh, little cauliflowers as the rest of that dries and that's still damp. That'll start running into it. So I've got a, a I'm picking my brush up, my size 10. I've, I've cleaned it in water and just gently took off a bit of the, the wet. So it's still a damp brush, but it's not wet. So now you can do that and draw it up. You just draw it up. Don't go rubbing right the way into into the, the back of the paper. Just the top part of the of the paint. Just like that. Now as long as we get those bits up there, we should be safe. It should all dry nice and flat, just as we want it. Lift all this little bit there. That's quite nice that. Let's leave that to dry just a little bit. Now let's leave that to dry. Okay, so I've let that dry ish. It's not bone dry. There's certain bits here which are still quite damp. But I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, only a tad bit of Payne's Grey to my to the mixture that I was um, that I was using for the sky. So if you remember, my sky was it was opera rose and a bit of cadmium yellow. So I'm going to mix those two colours again together. And now I'm going to just put a little tad, only a tad, of Payne's Grey. But because this is quite wet, when I put it on it should fuzz it out. And I want, I want it to feel like these are really far in the distance. So you have a very, a very soft edge. Now in that, as it's probably too much, um, um, up rose in there, not enough grey, so I've just added a bit more grey. Now it's a bit too dark, so I'm going to just add a bit of water to that. That's more like it. I don't want it too, um, too obvious. So I'm putting my, this little roof in here, and there's a little chimney pot there. Because it's quite soft, this because it's quite damp, this is going to dry with a soft edge. Not completely lost, but just a softer edge. I'm not being too fussy about keeping within my, my guidelines because it's See, it's dried a little bit more there, and that's okay, because what we can do is get a brush, dampen it off, and just on the outside of that line, just run it along there. That's okay. Bring that down a little bit now because we've got a mast here. 
I want to keep that fairly clean. It almost seems like there's a bit of a, a mistiness going on there. Just carefully over the top of that, uh, that roof on the boat. And don't worry if we get any, if we miss any little bits. It just adds to the, the character of it. Now this wall is going to be done at that angle, so it creates like a little bumps and ridges over the top. happy with that. Now this other side, let's concentrate on this now. It's still fairly damp because it's in the centre of the centre of the picture. And bring that pigment down a wee bit. Try and be careful on the character's head and body or shoulders. Yeah, just let that blend in together now. <coughs> Sip of me tea. Now let's move over to this part here. And this is the part of the wall. I put these characters here at the top. Mainly the same colour. Just some tiny people. Just to emphasise that that is fairly far away from us. Down there, just scrubbing it around. Out. Lift some of that out. Although that will dry a little bit deeper down. I'm going to put some boats here in the background anyway. So I'm letting these um, little levels dry naturally. I'm not going to use a. Uh, I'm not going to use it air dryer room because I think sometimes not all the times it depends what what paint you use what pigment you use 
I find that sometimes if you use a hairdryer, say for example it's uh, French Ultramarine or Burnt Sienna, which gives a natural granulation, if you use a hairdryer, it blows it away from those little indentations and you lose that, that gradation, uh, that um, granulation. And I think it's a shame that because it's a beautiful part of watercolour. Okay, so we've done that part, let's leave that to dry. Okay, now yeah, well that part is bone dry, which is just right. So we're keeping with the same, those same colours. Um, but I'm going to make it a little bit darker now, so a little bit of extra Payne's Grey on there. In with the mixture. Now let's just let's do test it. That seems all right. So we're gonna put some ideas of boats in the background. Okay. So now this don't it don't have to be nice and neat. You're just suggesting different boats, and it's a great way of shaping into your shaping your your foreground boats out. So we're just suggesting that something's going on in the background there. So we'll just making different marks. Lots of little masts sticking up and it just it just infers or suggests to the viewer these are boats all moored up here. fishing boats that but the idea is that it doesn't really matter that much as long as we've got a separation between that and this and obviously this and keep it going along there along to the sky there Yeah, they're no great, they're no great pictures these, these are just bits of information to break, to break that scene up. That's a bit of a problem, why? It doesn't matter. I'll we'll just put a, uh, make it look like it was a wobbly one. <coughs> and, and this part, this is the bottom end of the the harbour wall. So we can run that across there, and that will just about do that. No. Although it's not on the original, we've got a little bit of health and safety here. We've got a couple of little railings there, little things there where we can hold on to if we're going to fall. <coughs> now this, um, building does have little windows. So what we're going to create now is an, a suggestion of it. There's the top of the chimney part. 
and we'll have some eaves all the way along there okay and now we're going to suggest a couple of windows in here We're just suggesting them with a little a little dab of the paintbrush. Not doing anything really tricky. Um, we'll have a couple. We don't really need any more than that, so I'm just gonna leave it now. There. I'll leave that bit to dry on its own as we move along to these little characters here on the wall. So we've got a couple of boats here. We give those the same treatment. We'll just suggest a lot of their detail. information on the characters and carefully down with that on there. Uh, the brush is getting dry so the paint doesn't run off smoothly but that's not a problem. Okay. All right. We'll leave that to dry for a right, second. So all this is uh, dried at the back now. So what I'm going to do next is um, we're going to put some some shadows in the in the old, the whiter areas. So at like the tops of these boats and such before we go with the colour. Now the sun is coming from this angle in my picture. I'm going to use that so the shadows will all be at the back there. All on the back. All on that. So we'll we'll start with some shadows. Now I've used a it's a Payne's grey with a, a, just a touch of um French ultramarine. So I'm just going to put some little grey bits here. And now just adding a bit of water to pull that along. I'm going to dodge those little um, boys there, or flotillas, whatever they're called, and um, dodging those and this is quite a dark area, so I'm not bothered about that there. So I'm going to bring it, just adding water now to its lightest area. Keeping on adding water. Over there, to its lightest point, which is here. And that's okay. So it's nice and dark here and nice and light there. And this is, and you know, you can actually, where this is dry there, you can give it a go, just blending that in. But <coughs> for this picture, I don't really think I'm going to spend any time doing that. It don't really matter because we're going to go a really deep blue colour at the bottom here. 
really deep here. This part here. And we'll go with that shadow colour again. Just at the front part there. Just gonna add some water here, bringing this over to its lightest point over here. All clean water, just bring it up. It's all about contrast, so we're contrasting two things, we're contrasting light from dark and we're also con con contrasting cool colours from warm colours and hopefully it should make quite a dynamic paint in this just by thinking in those terms right now this is a catamaran I'm just I'm going to leave the top part there Lifting some of this water out because I need to go in this area with some darker shadow colour. I don't really want it to run in, so let's try it now. There you go, got away with that. Sometimes it can bloom into it. So this is the inside of the that whole area of the of that catamaran. Oh no, darker there. Let's just blend this out here so it's whiter, a bit lighter. That's fine. Let's work on this one now. The lightest areas here and the darkest areas. So this is the darkest area at the back. I'm going to go right the way around there. For this it's uh, we can bring its shape in. A lot of this picture, this boat is in in shadow. actually gone over that in this pink I don't really want that to show there so I'm gonna 
just concentrate on rubbing this out here in your brush just adding water and just do a little circles on it keep on doing these little titty circles just on the roof bar I'm not bothered about that because that's going to be uh, coloured blue that's the canopy but this part Gonna lift out. I'm just over the top of you. Sometimes a, a little short flat brush might help do the trick here. So I'm using this little short little. The bristles are a little bit firmer, so, so you can bash into it and destroy those. Destroy that edge, those where the paint ran down. That's looking better already. Do the same here. Just rub it into it, just with the tips of your brush with clean water. I think we'll probably get away with that. Let's just do the top part of here as well. Right, this is all blue, so it doesn't matter about that. Okay, so let like that one dry. I will work a little bit on this one. Well, back to our brush. We're going to use a rich colour of, I think that's ultramarine. I mean, I think that's Prussian. I like that Prussian blue. Let's go with that. Let's start off with this mast here. being too faithful to where I've put my my guidelines I'm letting the painting be a little bit more loose now and this part here top here and we'll do the hull bottom part of the hull now Make sure when you, before you start painting on this, you've got plenty of the same colour in your 
in your palette. You know, I'll be changing colors halfway through. A little bit of water to this part here. Just thinking that. I'm noting that there's a little bit of a that goes up further at the bottom than that part here, and it just creates a, a little tad of distance between that hole, that wing, and that one. If you had it at the same time, it just wouldn't make sense. So this is the canopy of the um, of this boat. And I'm gonna lift some of this colour out. I don't want it to be too dark. Oh, this part here, I'm gonna lift some of it out. As the sun shone down, it's kind of just casting a little glow on this part here. I'm going to see if I can lift out a little bit of colour from this side as well. It doesn't matter because I can always add a bit of colour to this side if that's the, an issue. So I'm going to lift some of this out. So I've just added some clean water. Just lifting a little bit of it out, just a tad. There we go. That's done that trick. And I'll just add some to this angle here. the effect there. I'm just I'm flipping underneath here just to show that little fin. Soften that edge. Right, now, 
example, this part here, I want to have it this quite dark here. But I still want to, as it were, it's quite relatively wet. So that's a nice graduated flow there. Part on this part here, that's the darkest part. So I'm putting my neatest bit of ultramarine blue here. Very, very neat, very dark. And there's a, a line here. So I can make that quite neat under there. Now. I'm going to put a little floating boy thing there. Um, I'm going to just add a bit of water here. Because the thing with watercolour, sometimes you want it to be a little bit translucent and that's that's one of the key properties of it, really. We've got another boy here, I'm just indicating that here with that. There was another one there, but I'm not, not that bothered about that. Now, the underside of the belt is a very rusty colour. So, so what I'm going to do. Just put some raw paintless grey underneath here. Let's just try this. Under there, like that. Bring that down. Boom. Bring that down there. And now, bring that colour underneath there. Just allow that colour to run up to its darkest point over here. I'll just up there. Right. Now 
to spell it at the back here. Although on the picture it is blue, same as this. I want to contrast that because I don't want them running into each other. So I'm going to make that this this ready colour. So on the top part there, we'll make those. We'll add a bit of this colour there. That colour there. We'll do the same as what we did there. We use this Payne's grey with a bit of ultramarine blue there. Now we're going to go straight in with this. Um, I think this is crimson alizarin. So. Uh, run into each other and it separates it for us I'm going to leave that pit at the moment because that's going to be very dark okay back bolts there just I'm going to add a little, make a colour of uh, burnt sienna and this um, paint grey here. Just uh, just to create a shadow colour. of a design on this part here so it we'll goes down there and it quite conveniently cuts against that white bolt yep and at the bottom Soften that edge up a little bit here by just adding a bit of dampness there just to soften that part there. Now, this is definitely a design, so we'll put a little bit of blue in that. shadow in there so I'm mixing the paint's grey with a bit of ultramarine blue so let's go and do that and these shadows can be fairly loose and you can for that part and underneath there Shadow behind these little boy devices. And 
run that over with a bit of clean water. That will leave a bit of a white edge at the top of this, this rim here. Okay. Just a little bit of detail, something's going on here. Okay, leave that bit to dry. Let's move on to this bit. some of that off and I put too much on there right. let's put a window in here little dab of paint there and run it over there to show that there is a distinction between there and there and we'll bring this up a wee bit with a bit of a bit of clean water Just softening all that. We'll go over that in a bit. Right now on here we've got some windows. lighter shadow there and now we're going to lift this these dark little blobs these little beads off there right. I want to do these masks but I'm going to let this dry first before I do those okay so now we're going to put this mask in so we have a mixture I'm going to do a little mixture of um, this is a bit of violet, a bit of violet and a bit of Prussian blue. And starting from the top, a little squiggle there because we know something's happening at the top there. We don't know quite what's happening there, but we know something's going on. And um, we need one confident smooth down here yep and then okay so now we'll put a little shadow in here just underneath there with that same colour and we can go down there now I've just realised I've left this white area here, but don't worry, I'm gonna we're gonna deal with that. So we're gonna come 
with a very, just with the very tip of this brush. Down there. And we have to go back up here now. Happy with that, push it down to there, and we're going to put some bits of interesting bits of uh, boat stuff on here, and hopefully it's going to confuse the eye when it sees that. Yeah, so we'll just have some bits of bits of gubbins here, really. Just put a little bit of shadow in those windows there. Eh? Now, with this down colour, it's like a violet colour, I'm putting an extra shadow in there. And down there. And down here we've got this. I think what we'll do, we'll extend, we'll extend this bit of detail going across there. So we'll go with a this colour over here. So we're just gonna carefully try to miss out those other bits. Just lifting up around those areas. Just getting away with it by doing this. Right. It's as if we meant it to happen, isn't it? Uh, just to confuse the eye a little bit. Lots of little boats here. And we're going 
going to go all over this. So it's a mixture of boat and wall. And We'll go over these bolts again. It's a darker colour. Let's have a little bit of purple in here, a little bit of violet as it comes towards us. don't know what this is, we're just thinking something's happening there. And it just lets the viewer make their own decisions as to what's going on. Now with our big brush we're going to create some some interesting stuff going on under there. A bit of um, a bit of water, a bit of reflection, a bit of sand, some stones and a little bit of seaweed and things like that. So first of all, let's wet the area. Let's wet that area just up to there. And we'll keep a couple of bits of area dry because that can be where it is. It's got a bit of water there. So first of all I'm gonna make it I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just picking bits of um colour from your pool. It's way too dark isn't it? So let's get a bit of um, a bit of purple and a bit of violet I like that just a bit and we'll get a little bit of burnt sienna Daniel Smith. It's called Quinacidone Orange and I just love it. It's really rich. So <clears throat> and now I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Just these just these little areas. Yeah. Let's chop the legs out in a bit. There you go. I'm using this side of my brush. Yeah. 
area. And a bit of this blue is a reflective colour now. All we're doing at the moment is just putting a little bit of a colour of sand in there and let's have a go with this little terriara sunbrush let's see if we can create some points of interest here just at the bottom here we could have a little bit of seaweed here now Bring a bit of seaweed into the game. Let's see if it works. Oh, a little smidgen. We don't want too much. We don't want to look like the parts on grass. Just a little smidge here, there. That's it. Just a, just to suggest. As we get closer towards us, we're trying to make this darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of darker colour here. This book is really good for just to create a few shapes. Very nice for that. As long as it's darker, it don't have to be black, as long as it's a nice dark colour, you can still fit some colours into there. Oh, you've got a bit of That's my other brush now. Bigger brush for that area, I think. Big brushes for big areas. Boom. Big. Confident strokes. I think it needs something over there. Right now then, this is all dry and this is where we can start putting our detail in. So I'm going to use my little Billy Shawl brush. Let's uh, 
let's put the I will still be putting more stuff in here but for the time being I just want to start working downwards now so I'm going to start with actually I use my, my big brush I need to put some of these masks in here so do that on there we'll have a Have a mask along here. I've got another couple of Just uh, get rid of that little bit there, and this part of here. I'll put this mast in here. Right, just get the tip onto that and let's put a little boom bar across here as well. There's something darker here. And although the image I'm working from doesn't have any um, actual sail on it, I I think it needs it, so I'm going to put that on there. Okay, so now uh, just a bit of darker colour in here. Okay, and I'll have some shade in the canopy. Right, while well that's drying, I'm moving over to my little Billy Shaw brush. It's got a nice little tip on it, a nice little point on there uh, where I can use this. I'm using some very dark colours, but not black, making a mixture of blue and burnt sienna. So. Some little bits of detail on it on here now. So now I'm just putting little bits of gubbins just to 
little bits of detail. Okay. It's just stuff to fill the eye. And to thinking that there's much more going on there. Except it makes it a little bit re more real as well. So I don't think this part here is as red as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to add a I'm going to put some dark just to the top there and run over a bit there. So it's a bit um a little bit of dry brush, I don't really want that effect. right that so the next thing I'm going to do is start putting these um, some colors on these characters so I'm making a mixture of upper rows and a little bit of cadmium yellow to make a, a, a flesh color so just a little dot there and his legs are showing this one here, his face is basically a little, little smidge that we're putting in. He's got his arms showing there, this chap. Right. <clears throat> and what I emphasise these characters a little bit and I'll fetch them out a little bit into the into the attention of us. So I'm gonna put a lovely yellow jacket on this chap here. As we're looking down there, that we've been brought there by the picture. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow, uh, orange there, and a, a little bit of red now. I think that's fine. Now I'm making these trousers a little bit more dark. So I'll put some. Trousers on, and he's got a bucket in his hand. I've left a little gap there for the rigging of this boat to come down there, and that I think is fine for that chap at the moment. Now, on this one here, I'm going to use the same colour, so we'll have a nice yellow colour here. I'm using yellow, not because I think that's what he was wearing, I just think it'll contrast against this blue colour. So, another bit of yellow there. Now, a bit of red on this side. So almost give it like a shade. This looks a bit too red there, so I'm going to add a bit more yellow to this part here. 
There we go. Right, now you can have your big yellow bucket. <coughs> uh, with dark trousers on. Now then, I'll put that brush away a minute. I'm using this one again now. I'm going to get some shadows in these characters underneath. So I'm going to create a nice crimson alizarin and Prussian blue. A bit more crimson there. Sun's coming from that way. So let's just. Only teach you. These are titty, uh, very thin shadows here. Now let's get a bit of water in this because these shadows are a little bit too dark there. So, so let's get the shadows under there. And there's something at the back there, so it's coming along there. <coughs> It's so, okay, uh, not very, not very neat these lines, you don't want them very neat lines, you want a little bit of I want it to be breaking up at certain areas, take that right away out because that's a, the shadow of the mask. This part here, we're gonna make quite a large shadow here. suggestion of a, um, a reflection yeah and we have some blue all it's doing is just suggesting that there is water here so we're saying oh look there's a bit of a reflection going on here as soon as our mind sees a, a copy of something up of there, it thinks, oh, reflection. As soon as it says reflection, it says water, something wet. I think that will be all right. Interesting shapes on here. I'll just put a couple of little. I'll tell you what, let's be a little bit brave, shall we? <laughs> Give it a bit of a little bit of. So we've got a little splash there, a little splash there. You know what we do with our splashes? Turn them into birds. There we 
Michael and I always like to put an odd number of birds in the pictures for some reason, don't know why. The last bits are going to be really dark areas, so I'm using just neat Payne's grey underneath there. Okay. That one there has got a bit of a boom on that side as well. Must on here. Now there's one here as well, which I've missed out. Yes. Very dark underneath that boat. Very dark here. And I think we should have a little bit of colour on these on these. Um, boys so I'm going to put a little bit of yellow just there over there and I think we'll put a bit of red on that one there we go Right, and I think before I um, ruin it by saying, oh, just one more thing, I think we'll call it a day on that one. So, I do hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, little tutorial. And it's been mainly about experimenting, putting different... Uh, wet washes on and dry washes and building it up from the back to the front and not being afraid to change the colour to your liking so uh, so you think that's that's how it should be um, so yeah so please subscribe and if you want to have a visit on my website www.somersetartist Dot com and you'll see lots of other work that I've done and things for sale so thank you once again for watching bye